All right, we'll call the meeting to order. Welcome to the uh, informational session for the annual town meeting. Uh, since this is uh, a Zoom version, we're gonna do things a little bit differently uh, than usual. Uh, we're gonna go through some, some kind of ground rules to start off with, and uh, we're gonna enforce them fairly strictly uh, just because of the difficulties and challenges of, of a Zoom meeting. Uh, first, I want to say thank you to all the municipal employees, departments, volunteers, and Hadley Media for uh, their um, help in arranging not only the annual town meeting and the logistics behind it, um, but also putting together the warrant and the budget in this uh, difficult year. So the intent of this forum is uh, to present information to voters, basically to provide an overview and context for annual town meeting and to improve voters understanding of individual warrant articles and offer voters an opportunity to ask questions. The forum is not intended uh, to stop, uh, stump for any you know, particular side of an article, uh, any votes, or for anyone to advocate for any particular article or against any particular article. Um, just a reminder that the annual town meeting is a Saturday this year, June 20th at 10 a.m. at Hopkins Academy in the baseball fields. And we moved outside so that way we can socially distance and, and uh, comply with all the COVID rules that, that we're dealing with. Um, so logistics, uh, everyone is uh, strongly urged to wear a mask. Um, we're going to have socially distanced seating in the field. There'll be speakers out there so people can hear what's going on. Um, Chief Spank Nabel said that there will be water and uh, also copies of the warrants at seats ahead of time. So that way people are not having to worry about checking in at tables um, and you know handling copies of, of warrants and things like that. Uh, but again, it's outside, so um, you know, show up early, get a good seat. So uh, Chief, is there anything else you wanted to add as far as the uh, logistics go? So it's just a basic map of the layout. So uh, you can see where the entry point is, where you will check in with the town clerk and her staff. Uh, the big blue square that you see, uh, that'll be the seating area. And then the smaller area up by, uh, in front of, up top of that is your select board, finance committee, uh, town council, town clerk, and the moderator in the center. So we will have everything set for you and uh, we will have assistance for folks that have wheelchairs. We will have the ability to get you to your chair uh, if needed. Uh, the chairs will be set up in groups of two. If you need additional chairs for your family, we'll get them to you. And we're also setting up a plan for mics and making sure everybody's healthy. Okay. And, and can you, Mike, can you um, also put on there that people, if they have any signs or symptoms of a, of a new cough, um, a fever, a rash, loss of smell or taste, uh, any of those symptoms that please do not show up that day? I think, can we put out there what the signs and symptoms are that we would like you to at least be able to answer to yourself? so that you're not able to um, pass that on to anybody else. If you have any of the signs or symptoms, we would prefer that you not come. We can add that. Uh, I'm sure Jennifer and I will be working on getting information out to the public prior to this, so we can certainly add that to it. Don't, don't you think so? So that we can, it's almost like I do when I self-test to go into work every day. And I think people should be conscious of that, of uh, doing that also. Okay. So um, last thing, since this is Zoom, as we go through the warrant articles, we have a question that we would like, like to ask a question about a particular warrant article. Please make it obvious, wave your hands uh, so we can see you on your video. Um, just to make it clear, because everybody who's not speaking will remain on mute. And um, we do have to be fairly strict when someone starts to advocate for or against the article, then we're going to have to mute and, and move on. So, was, there, 
Was there any town business we're doing tonight or not, David? I don't believe so. No. Can I just make one quick statement that I forgot last week before we do this uh, annual town meeting? I want. I just wanted to bring forward that uh, Becky Ufnick and Mark Ufnick uh, on Memorial Day weekend, before Memorial Day, they were at our Hadley welcome sign and they were weeding and taking care of those flowers as you came into Hadley. And I, I just want to recognize them as uh, uh, good citizens as they've always been. They've actually planted some flowers there in the past and um, just wanted to thank them for making it look nice as, as people come into Hadley. So thank you, Mark, Mark and Becky. We really appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah, thank absolutely. You. Thanks, David. So I will turn this over to David Nixon to talk a little bit about the challenges of the FY21 budget. Uh, due to COVID-19. So David, take it away. Okay, thank you very much, David, Phil, and uh, good evening, everybody. Um, we have uh, uh, done this budget three times now. We presented a budget back in February, uh, which was balanced, and then the local economy stopped working for the most part, and we had to go back and cut about $828,000 out of the budget and then we lost more revenue, so we had to do it a third time. But to, by tonight, the budget is balanced. Uh, revenues are projected to decrease by over $1 million from this year to next fiscal year. Expenditures are reduced from FY 2020 to 21. Uh, we expect that the first and the second quarters of FY 21 are assumed to be very weak with a slow recovery. So the, the budget is based with that assumption in mind. We're deploying a concept called defense and strength, uh, defense and depth rather. It's a concept we've borrowed from cybersecurity where if a program is attacked and one measure doesn't uh, defend adequately, the measure comes into, uh, into effect in order to address the threat. Uh, very much like a uh, cyber attack, a virus attack uh, presents certain challenges, and we will meet those challenges by employing a defensive strategy, which is multi-year, covering FY21 through FY23, adaptable to changing circumstances, flexible in its implementation, and designed to re reinforce reserves, preserving original balances and stabilization, school choice, and other reserves, spending only surpluses in years two, three, and four. Uh, defense in depth also helps us maintain our AAA bond rating by providing a written plan explaining how and when Hadley will replenish stabilization and fund OPEB. And we have distributed that plan to the town's financial management team, investment advisors, OPEB actuarial, our chief financial advisor, and town meeting. So getting into the articles themselves, it's customary that we do a number of articles that generate no controversy, need no debate, and can be properly voted by consent. We put those onto a consent agenda. This year, we have seven articles, which we think uh, uh, comprise the consent uh, agenda. Article one, acceptance of grants, so that we don't have to call town meeting every time we get a grant. Article two, acceptance of chapter 90 money for roads and bridges, so that we can keep the roads and bridges in good shape. Article three, we've never had to do this, but in case we run into cash uh, flow management, we can temporarily borrow against future um, cash, future revenue within the fiscal year. Uh, for cleanup uh, old projects where we've completed projects and we have balance left over that are, being, that are unproductive, return that money back to the original source from which it came. We have two CPA deadlines that have expired on two projects which are active, the Hopkins Academy, athletic fields and the town hall pillar uh, uh, project. So we're just asking for two year extensions on those CPA deadlines. And then we always put away $26,000 for the water treatment plant membranes so that we have in a 10 year period a 
fully funded replacement of those membranes to keep the water quality good in the town of Hadley. And then finally, the administrative uh, article for the Community Preservation Act. This is a housekeeping article and it helps with uh, them with uh, keeping their program going. Okay. Just pause there for a moment to see if there are any questions. Who were pro-slavery before the Confederacy like John C. Calhoun. I'm sorry, I didn't quite hear that. Joyce, if you're asking a question, you're, you're, uh, you're muted. Could we please have people that are speaking identify themselves as they would for name and address, please? All right, I'm going to go on with the next couple of articles. We can circle back if there's a question. Articles eight and nine are the general fund budget and the enterprise fund budgets for FY21. General fund is uh, at this point $19.88 million and the enterprise funds are at $2.07 million. Uh, the significant features of the budget are that level services are maintained where possible. Reduced services are um, when necessary. No enhanced services. This is not the year to expand the government. Uh, reinforcement of reserves for the use of in FY22 and beyond. And again, that ties into the defense in depth strategy. Early pay down of $100,000 of debt principal to allow for future capital. Again, defense in depth. And continued commitment to following best management practices for our financial policies. Amy, does the Finance Committee have any uh, commentary on Articles 8 and 9? Uh, no comments at this time. Okay, you have recommended both of 8 and 9, right? That is correct. Okay. okay. Uh, Dan Zodonik, do you want to speak to Article 10, the Assessor's Legal uh, Defense? Uh, yeah, what we're looking for here, oops, sorry. Uh, what we're looking for here is money for large commercial cases that are, we believe we're gonna have to take to the ATB. Uh, Town Council has recommended that we have some money put aside to use to have expert witnesses review our assessments. And this is just the beginning portion of that. If we have any very large assessments, there might be a larger bill associated with it. But in the past, we've kind of been behind an eight ball where uh, taxpayers, large commercial taxpayers have taken us to the ATB. And unfortunately, the ATB will not listen to valuation testimony unless you're considered an expert witness by the ATB. And yeah. there is nobody that the town has, including myself, that would be considered an expert in commercial valuation. And Dan, just for everybody's uh, edification, what does ATB stand for? Uh, ATB is the Appellate Tax Board. And that's, this, it, that, that's located in Boston. It's a state level of basically the Board of Assessors Appeal. The taxpayer would file with us. We would review it. If we think it's okay, we would deny it or grant a partial abatement or say they're right and give them an abatement. If they're dissatisfied with our action, they would then file with the Appellate Tax Board and that steps it up to a whole new level. All right, thank you. Are there any questions so far? We'll go on to, we'll go on to the next slide. Article 11, Jane Nevin Smith, do you wanna to speak to this article, please? Yes, this is a housekeeping um, article. In the past, when we had van service, people would make contributions, but now with our new program, we're going to have a fee and you can't put fees in the original fund. So we're making a different fund. There are two parts to this, one of which is to establish the new van operating revolving fund. Um, 
And the second one is just to comply with municipal financial law, we have to restate our existing revolving funds. So it's a big argument article there, but not much going on. It's uh, really the van is the, the, the main the main show. Article 12, we're going to be transferring funds into two accounts in order to shore up our defensive strategy. Uh, first is 25,000 from surplus free cash into the unemployment trust fund. Um, and then the other is to transfer $183,383 of surplus free cash to the stabilization fund so that it will be there for next year when we need it. These reserves will be an important source of funds for the next fiscal year and are consistent with the defense and depth strategy. David, just a quick question uh, before you move on is just one thing that people often ask is our uh, fund balances, yep. uh, stabilization fund, et cetera. So do you just want to give those real quick? I don't know if now's the best time or before, but now wouldn't hurt. So thank sure. you. Certainly happy to. So there's about $1.7 million in stabilization. Uh, there's about an equal amount in our Community Preservation Act fund. Uh, there is um, our free cash was certified at about $950,000. Our um, water reserves are at $1.3 million. The sewer reserves are about $3.5 thousand dollars three hundred fifty thousand dollars and our hadley media reserves are about two hundred thirteen thousand dollars those are the big accounts there's about a i think about a million and a half in opeb at this point maybe christian do you want to talk about article 13 the capital projects Sure, yeah, we have a, um, a reduced capital plan um, this this town meeting just because of COVID and previous uh, capital articles just being turned down. So everything here is either from the reserve funds or borrowed within the levy. So first we have our public safety request, uh, $105,000 for an emergency generator for the public safety complex. I don't know if the chief wants to say anything about that right now, um, specifically. So I'll just give a second. Um, yes, this is just a, a request for replacement of the original generator that we've been having continuous issues with. Um, and uh, we're kind of at a desperate level now of getting this replaced. Uh, due to its age and not being able to get new parts for it. So we're, uh, we've been, we have added some protection to it right now to monitor it until we could figure out replacement. And so we would appreciate, uh, we would definitely appreciate the support if we could get that to happen. And, and just so you can remind me, do you know about how many horsepower this is? So people can just get an idea of how large it is. It's in like, is it a hundred or, I mean, it's pretty big. Yeah, it, no. it actually, it runs the entire safety complex. So police, fire and communication center. I'm not sure what the horsepower is, but um, John might be able to answer that question. He was part of the um, the look at uh, when we looked at this with the with multiple vendors. So um, I'm not sure what the horsepower is, but it, it does cover the entire building. Okay, yeah, and I'm just trying to give people an idea of the scale of this generator. It's not just something that you would pull out and plug into your house and start up. It's a major piece of equipment, so it's a, a large generator. And then, it's a pad, mount, oh, pad mounted. It's not so much the horsepower of the engine, which is, which is high anyway. It's the kilowatt uh, hours of the generator, how many kilowatts it takes to run that building. It's called a KW factor on the engine generator set itself. So, uh, I mean, we'll have that stuff for town meeting. Uh, Mike, you got that stuff there on the estimates? I do. Yeah, I can get all the the specifics of it. Yes. All right. Yeah, I mean, if you want me to speak on it, I'll get that information from you. I'll speak on a town meeting if you want. 
But I think John, John, yeah, I think I think people ought to know that uh, this is a necessity, and we kind of uh, uh, Mickey Mouse it back together last year when we did ask the town people to support it. That was our mistake in not actually taking it from a budget um, and putting it into effect because it is an emergency piece of equipment um, that we need. So we are not. Uh, putting any money on tax dollars with this either. Yeah, and and it was obsolete when we put it in. How many years ago now, Mike? When we built that safety complex? Over twenty yeah. years ago. Yeah, it was actually it was the what it says on the unit is 1992. The building was built in. It was completed in 96. Yeah. Yeah, so just an essential piece of equipment that's old and really needs to get replaced. It's a large generator, so it's a major uh, piece of equipment that's essential to the running of public safety. Um, the next request is Hadley Media. It's $5,000 for equipment to continue operations from the Goodwin. And this is just a request that would come out of Hadley Media Reserves and it would just keep them going. Uh, there as the transition happens for the library, I believe, from the Goodwin to the new library. Uh, then we have, and that would all, just to be specific again, that would all come out of Hadley Media Reserves. Uh, the Agriculture Commission is requesting $600 for roadway signs, announcing the Had that Hadley is a right to farm community. This is something they've been working on for at least a year, if not longer. Um, and this would be, uh, I believe, borrowed within the levy, if not free cash, um, but $600. And then DPW is requesting $65,000 for state mandated fencing at two water tanks. This would come out of water reserves and it is something that has been requested um, by the state and is not a project that DPW um, is, is setting out on their own to do, but it's something that the state is requiring the DPW to do. I don't know if anybody wants to make any comments about those number two, three, or four from Hadley Media, the Agricultural Commission, or the DPW. Kristen, can I ask a question? Yep, go ahead, Randy. Um, num item number four, it, it says it's state mandated. So what happens if the voters decide they don't want to spend the money? What's the state ramifications? I don't know exactly how that would look. I don't, maybe David Nixon, or I don't know if Chris is on the call could, could answer that better than me. But that's not going to, that's not going to come out of anything. It's not going to be. Uh, people aren't going to have to pay for that. That's going to be taken out of water reserves. So it's not going Correct. to, it's not going to be anything that they're going to have to pay for extra. Well, it's, they've, it's, they've already paid for it out of water reserves. Correct. I, I understand all that, but let's say that they don't still don't want to vote for it. What happens to the town? If, if we don't, and I think that's just something that needs to be put out there just so everybody understands what the potential is if we don't do this. Well, the answer, the answer is more likely than not because it's a mandate from the Department of Environmental Protection is that they will force the town to uh, expend the money uh, in an emergency appropriation. Um, they regard the, the water tanks as critical uh, uh, infrastructure for the town and they want to see the fence go up in order to uh, protect that critical infrastructures. Basically a safety issue right now at this point. Correct. Along with, along with the signage and everything else around the tanks and the pump stations. Yeah. So that's just all you have to tell them. It's a safety issue. And, and just so people can be specific, John, this is the uh, Mount Warner tanks, correct? Two I, be I believe it's Mount Warner and uh, Mount Holyoke. That's correct. It's two tanks. Okay. Thank you. And unless there are any other comments, I'm all set with this article. That's everything. All right. So I'll move on. Article 14. I think, uh, Amy, we're going to skip over this. We're not ready for prime time on this one. 
Yeah, we're going to pass over that unless anybody on the select board has an objection to that. No, no problem. Hopefully we re revisit it in the fall. All right. Uh, okay, so we have CPA articles. Uh, I know that Andy Morris Freeman is uh, available to you. And I think I saw Jenny uh, Venez. Um, do you want to speak to the first article for uh, for the uh, fitness part? Um, let me just give a little a, a little background first. There are uh, eight total. C uh, I mean, sorry, nine total CPA articles, uh, seven of which uh, include spending. If all the articles pass, it's about three hundred and eighty thousand uh, dollars in spending. And there's a $2.8 million available in the CPA, various CPA accounts. Uh, we had a state match of 41.8% uh, for this year. Uh, with COVID, who knows what's going to happen next year. Um, so I don't know if Jenny wants to talk about the first one, which is the uh, fitness park. Um, I can answer any questions if you want now, or um, I can give a background. I can wait for the town, town meeting. It's up to you guys. I don't want to. Um... We're just doing previews right now, Jenny. So can you just do a preview? Sure. Um, it's the um, the plan is a, a fitness court. It's a 40 by 40 fitness court that goes on a cement pad that um, would, the proposed site is seven set stations inside the court. Um, we are, I got a $30,000 grant for uh, Park and Rec to put this in and we're asking for $110,000 from the CPA to finish the project. And this would be for Zaturka Park? That's the site, yes. Hearing no questions, let's move on to the pavilion. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, uh, previous CPA expenditure was to build a pavilion by the elementary school. Uh, this new proposal is to improve the pavilion, bringing uh, electrical service and uh, furniture, picnic tables, and that kind of thing, uh, both to be used by the elementary school and by uh, Park and Rec. Any questions on this one? Hearing none. Um, I just have uh, one quick question on this. That uh, just would this at all help with summer camp this summer, or is there any plans for summer camp this summer <laughs> that this could help with? I'm I'm not sure that the work will be done in time for this summer. I can speak to that. Yeah. For summer camp, please. Uh, so. Uh, Christian, I'm not sure if you saw today, we did release a letter that summer camp, anything on site would be canceled for this summer, uh, just with the guidelines released by the CDC and, uh, and the state, it's too tough to um, try and get that all together. Um, the pavilion probably wouldn't have been much of a factor, even if we did hold it, uh, given the stringent guidelines. And, and could this be done before the school year to help it all with transitioning the school year? I'm just, or would it take longer? Uh, that I don't know. I think I'd have to talk to the building inspector and see, you know, how quickly we could get the money and have that ordered and go from there. Uh, what's needed are, um, I guess, to finish the electrical work and then get the picnic tables in, but I'm not sure. I was working with Tim prior to his retirement on the logistics of this, so. Hearing no further comments, I'll move on <laughs> to the next slides. Uh, two more CPA articles, the window restoration and the water testing. Andy, do you wanna to speak to those? Andy, you're muted. Two architectural details <clears throat> of the old Hooker School have been saved 
the round window <clears throat> and the brackets uh, from the side door, which uh, will be restored and preserved and hopefully displayed uh, as um, art objects in the new library. Um, so that's number one. Any, any questions about that one? The brackets uh, are really beautiful and if hung on the wall in parallel make this wonderful heart shape uh, design, which I think will be really nice. Uh, if there's no questions about that one, we'll go to number two, uh, which is um, again, a state mandated uh, town responsibility for water testing. Uh, CPA money can be used to get the program started for this year. Uh, various places will be tested. In the past, uh, only uh, North Hadley Pond was tested. Um, after this, though, the town will have to take it out of the regular budget because CPA can't be used for ongoing projects. And just to be clear, this is uh, different than the water quality testing that we do every year and report it out to the residents every year for the drinking water. And this is different from the stormwater runoff uh, quality under MS4 that's separately funded and we're working that five-year program. What else do we have that we're, we would be testing? Bay Road we just gave to, uh, they're gonna be responsible for testing that water or are we? We don't, I, I wanna chime in on this. We don't own Hadley, Hadley Village Pond people that abut that property own the pond, not the, not the town of Hadley. I just want to make that clear that that's not a, a town owned piece of property. This include things like the Fort river, the Connecticut river, things like that, Andy, or, uh, uh as, I, as I understand it, this is, uh, uh, in the purview of the board of health and they told us that it was mandated by the state. So this is a way to get it started uh, outside of the regular budget process. But again, it is not owned by the town of Hadley. Uh, I'm, I'm, not an, I'm not an expert on the rules, but I don't believe that makes a difference. Okay. I think from attending the CPA session, it was uh, for Lake Warner and it was because of the public boat launch there. So I don't know the ownership of the boat launch, but I believe that was the reason for it. Yeah, but these, these are good questions and maybe the Board of Health can speak to this uh, these issues at the town meeting. Right. I, I, I would like the Board of Health to chime in on this, please. So um, based upon my best understanding, the boat ramp itself is owned by the town, but the water, the water is owned by the Friends of Lake Warner. Correct. All right. So this will generate some debate, it sounds like. Let's move on to articles 19 and 20. Uh, the library building renovation. Andy, do you want to speak to these? Uh, let's do number two first, because that's right. the bigger one. Um, the renovation and preservation of the old library building to be turned into municipal offices, uh, including uh, a handicapped accessible bathroom, um, and CPA money can be used for that. And that's the $226,000. Uh, the second phase is um, uh, a study for a possible elevator in the future. Um, in CPA, we like to do the, first you pay for the plan, then you pay to implement the plan. And this will be an architecture, architecture's design of where the best place to put the new elevator would be. All right, moving on. Article 21, historic uh, map preservation. And Andy, this is a labor of love, isn't it? Uh, yes, uh, a year ago, um, town meeting voted $500 to have an assessment done of the two 1740 era maps, uh, deerskin maps of the town of Hadley. Uh, they have been sitting at the museum for over a year. Um, we missed the last funding cycle and this cycle has been pushed back, obviously. But now the um, 
the assessment has been done and the work to preserve the maps for future generations comes to $4,200. So I'm hoping the town meeting will uh, agree to fund the money and then we can get the maps back. Uh, originally, we were hoping to display the maps, but the conservationist says that uh, the best thing to do in terms of preserving the maps is to uh, put them away, basically, and not to display them. Do we have photographs of those maps? Um, well, you can't use CPA money to make facsimiles of documents, um, so that would have to be done separately. I wonder if we could get an idea of how much that would cost, because I'm sure somebody would be willing to donate the money to do that and then maybe present the photographs of those maps, just putting well, it out there. I would be happy to uh, to look into that. Be nice David, what, permission. David so, what you were asking was, do you have pictures of those maps right now that we can, uh, like a photocopy of them or anything temporarily to bring to town meeting that we can show to people? Yeah, I think it's part of your heritage, so it'd be nice to have uh, at least a, um, a photograph of what they look like, uh, because they are quite beautiful. Um, I'm interested in knowing what part of Hadley they come from. Uh, they were obviously done before the split up of Hadley in 1742, uh, so it could be... It could show portions of old Hadley, which might have been in Hatfield, South Hadley, Pelham, and Amherst. Um, nice, nice to see what that would look like. Right. As I said, we were hoping to display them, but the conservationist says the best thing to do is to put them back in the drawer. Yeah, keep them out of the light. Right. How big are these maps? Uh, they are big, um, 40 inches. Uh, they're uh, they're not square. They're odd shaped because they're deer skin. One of them is double sided. One of them is single sided. I think it'd Andy, be very cool to uh, get uh, you know a reproduction made that we could display in town hall or the library or something like that. At least so people can see. And then you know you, maybe you pull out the the real ones out of preservation for you know special events or something like that. But it'd be very cool to let people see the history. Right. I believe for the three hundred and fiftieth uh, celebration they were on display. But was there a question? Yeah, I was curious about the meaning of the word curation in that item. Uh, I, 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 I'm not sure. What Is it? I mean restoration or conservation? Uh, well, act both. Um, there were previous attempts at conservation, uh, which were which were good for the time that they were used, but are no longer considered best practices, uh, such as using um, rice starch on tears and that kind of thing. So the previous conservation efforts will be removed, uh, and they'll be put in a new archival plastic material uh, cleaned and pretty much that's it. I would suggest maybe changing the word to have a closer connection to the activity that'll happen with the maps. Uh, restoration and preservation? I think that gives a clearer idea and demonstrates more clearly what the money would be spent on. I'm looking at the um, uh, at the Warren articles now to check the language. So just give me a second. Uh, it says commission for preservation of two 1740 maps of Hadley. So it uses the word preservation and not curation. I would change that personally. You would change curation? Yeah, to preservation. Okay. Just as a comment, uh, curation is a very broad term and it does include preservation. Do you think that will be commonly understood? Uh, we'll, we'll wordsmith this a little bit. So uh, we'll be ready for the 20th. Okay, well, I have no objection to changing the wording. 
can I ask who's asking for the change of the wording? Haley. Oh, Haley from from um, the senior center. Oh, you're mute. Can't hear you. Who was asking for the change? I didn't catch the person's name when they made a comment. They're supposed to be identifying themselves. Uh, Sorry, Joyce. It's Haley Wood from the Council on Aging. Thank you, Haley. I appreciate that. People would yep. like to know that also when people speak. Not, I'm just not picking you out, but just to identify people for, that are joining the Zoom. Sure. Thank you. I would like to say something, Michelle Morris Friedman. Um, I agree we should probably change that because curation, I, I looked it up and I had thought it entailed also the previous work they had done on documenting and researching the historical um, background of the maps. But it says the action or process of selecting, organizing, and looking after the items in a collection or exhibition, and I think preservation and conservation are more accurate for what we're looking at right here. Hello, Randy Eiser here. Uh, the article, as Andy pointed out, says preservation. And in order to change the article, we're, somebody's going to have to amend it at town meeting. And based on what I'm looking at, personally, I don't think it's an issue. But I don't think we're going to don't I don't think you need to try to amend it right away. Let's see how it plays out so that we don't have to drag the meeting out any longer than is necessary. Okay. Yeah, th these uh, slides that you're probably seeing on your, your screen on Zoom are just for this informational session, not, not for the actual town meeting. Okay, can we move on? Article 22, Bill uh, Dwyer, I think I saw you in the in the uh, crowd. Do you want to talk about Article 22 and Article 23? These are both planning board articles. I would be happy to. Thank you. So Bill, Bill Dwyer from the planning board. Uh, Article 22 is an attempt to tweak the parking requirements. As the parking requirements now stand, we require two square feet of parking for each square foot of building a business floor area. So uh, for a restaurant or a retail store, that is not unreasonable. When you're talking about a, say, 40,000 square foot industrial building that has 12 employees, the requirement of 80,000 square feet of parking uh, becomes unreasonable. So what we're talking about here is to have a reduced parking requirement for industrial uses in industrial districts. So if you have a plant, a warehouse, uh, we will um, consider reducing the parking to a less uh, to a lesser level, uh, we uh, the actual bylaw proposal the language does have a formula for how many spaces for office use for delivery trucks, but it is less than the two square feet per uh, business floor area that applies otherwise. So this is part of an overall plan. This is a first, uh, a first stab at some tweaking. Uh, we may look at some of our other requirements going forward, but uh, right now we're just doing a reduction of parking for industrial uses in the industrial zone. Bill, could you tell people where the majority of the industrial zoned areas are in town, what streets we're talking about? So there is a portion that is zoned industrial off of North Maple Street. That business area is pretty much built out. Uh, we also have an industrial zone uh, along Route 9 
And to some extent, uh, you basically the triangle of Route 9 and Mill Valley Road, although some of that is not zoned industrial. Uh, Mountain Farms Mall is zoned industrial, but they would not get a reduced parking requirement if they're retail. And there are some areas off of South Maple Street, just south of the bike path that are zoned industrial. So it's, it's actually a relatively small area of the town, but uh, some of it is, uh, it's kind of a high impact area. Any other questions? Moving right along then. Article 23. So Article 23 it brings us back to something that we, we first were kicking around oh, probably almost 10 years ago, um, creating a uh, municipal affordable housing trust fund. Uh, at the time we first raised it, there was no money. Um, as a result of the successful build out of East Street Commons, the senior housing project, uh, we are looking at uh, $350,000 more or less of developer money that can be applied to affordable housing. However, we do not have a receptacle, a bucket to put that money in right now. We have no way to access the money. So uh, we are bringing back the idea of the Municipal Affordable Housing Trust Fund so that we will have a receptacle, um, a receive, uh, receptacle to uh, access that money, which is now sitting in a lawyer's trust fund account uh, courtesy of Barry Roberts. Uh, going forward, the Affordable Housing Trust Fund would have the ability to work with the CPA committee to access the affordable housing component of CPA money. But that's, that's for the next, um, that's for the future. Right now, we're just trying to create a uh, holding facility to access the $350,000 that is currently available to us for the restricted purpose of affordable housing. And that's about it. Are there any questions on this? Yes, I have a question. Um, who would be responsible for the uh, implementation and the spending of the money in the trust fund? Would it be a, a separate committee? Would it be the select board? Has that been considered yet? There, uh, so the statute uh, creates uh, chapter 44, section 55C, creates uh, a, a board. And the board requires one member from the select board, uh, one member from the planning board. Uh, it may, allows for community, community members. But initially, the uh, planning board has volunteered <clears throat> with one representative from the select board to be determined later to be the initial affordable housing trust fund board because we are up to speed on what the requirements are. Uh, <clears throat> again, going forward, we would be happy to step aside one by one to allow other, others to step forward. But um, in the initial instance, it, does, it would be a board and it would be a board composed of uh, six or seven people to start with. 
Right. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't say who I was. Uh, Andy Morris Friedman, chair of the CPA. Um, when this new board does get started, um, I would like to suggest that the select board consider changing the seat on the CPA committee from the housing authority to the uh, municipal trust housing fund. Um, since I think it would be more effective in working together and being able to use that CPA money more effectively. So I hope that the select board would consider doing that. Andy, as a technicality, I think we'd have to amend the bylaws so we can set that up for the fall town meeting if you uh, if you want me to work in that direction. Oh, well, I, I would need to discuss it with the committee first, but that's my personal opinion. Okay. Okay. And, and I think that's that's a fine idea. Um, as I said, the in the first instance, the idea is we want to set up a holding facility so that we can access the uh, $350,000. And then where we go from there is a matter for future discussion. Can I ask why it's not a revolving account where it's accessible instead of a trust fund? Why not into a revolving account? Uh, because that is how the state has set it up through chapter 44, section 55C. They do call for what you're creating is an affordable housing trust fund. Functionally, I think that is a revolving account. I mean, it will not be part of the general account, uh, not, not, not general funds of the town. It will be trust funds. All right. So it still is, is considered a revolving account so that you can access it. Yeah, functionally, I think it is. Now, there, there are going to be limitations on access. We have uh, created a structure, which is all in the warrant, um, that it, it, in a way, it's not unlike what you have set up with the building committees, that the uh, Affordable Housing Trust Fund has authority to spend limited amounts of money on its own, but certain trigger settings that will require going back to town meeting to spend or require uh, con consultation with the select board to spend larger amounts of money and going back to town meeting to borrow money, even though the trust fund will have legal authority to borrow, we will not exercise that authority without town meeting approval. Okay, thank you, Bill. Okay, I'll just say too that I did, did volunteer to be on this uh, municipal affordable housing trust fund as a representative from the select board if it does go through. And, um, you know, it really does allow us to access those funds that we really can't access right now, and spend them on affordable housing but as well as affordable housing related projects, whether that's consulting or different planning projects, et cetera. So this is a vehicle for us to actually access those funds right now that are like, like Bill said, just sitting in a lawyer's trust somewhere. Yeah, in the short run, we are not proposing, you know, we have no specific proposals. We're not saying we're going to build a, an affordable house on East Street this year. We're, we're just not at that level. We're just in the first instance looking to create a, a receiving place for the funds that we are entitled to. Going forward, the sky's the limit, uh, or at least in planning, uh, thinking the sky's the limit, but um, in in the first instance, we're just creating a way to access money that we are entitled to. Okay, thank you. All right, last uh, last call from anyone here. Uh, uh, any any warrant article items? Any questions before we close it up? We'll go through the the video list here. 
wave at us if you're you can't unmute or you would like to say something. All right, I don't see anything. Um, I just wanted to remind everybody, uh, let's uh, be patient at town meeting. Masks uh, are important, uh, you know, social distancing. And, uh, you know, thanks to the, uh, the moderator for working to, you know, get all these logistics and details handled. And actually, uh, Randy's still here. Randy, do you want to say anything real quick and before we close out about uh, town meeting? No. Okay. Did you hear what I said? Uh, no, you were muted. <laughs> okay. I think you hit the nail on the head by telling everybody they need to be patient. Uh, people can bring their own chairs if they want to. I was at Hopkins today with Mike Spanknable going over how everything is going to work out. He's got a very good plan for getting people in and seated. Uh, so again, just come, take your time, be patient, and we'll get through this, and everything should be fine. And we're looking for a quorum of 100, right? That's our target? Yes, sir. Okay. Any last comments from anybody on the select board? And if not, then... Looks like Joyce has something. I don't know if she's muted. No. Yeah. Um, just a quick question. Um, how are we doing the dedication to the book. Did we decide on that? We only received one nomination for the uh, Golden Oakley, which um, made it pretty easy. I, I'm so sorry, I always call it the Golden Oakley. I don't mean to, um, the Oakley Award. And um, we only received one nomination for the dedication this year. Um, so there wasn't a whole lot to do and I ran them by the Davids. I didn't okay. nominate you, Joyce. Sorry. Yeah, I, I missed out on that somewhere along the road here. Uh, is a select board meeting again before town meeting? Yes. yes. Okay. So maybe we can just go over everything at that meeting. Just the final run through uh, everything that needs to happen. Uh, I don't know if David Phil wants to do a, a state of the town address like Christian's been doing the past couple of meetings. It's fine if you do. It's fine if you don't. But I guess we just need to go over all the logistics of things like that so we can make sure everybody is allowed to speak if they would like to. Uh, absolutely. And we're also planning on doing the uh, pre-annual town meeting, select board meeting as we normally do, getting together with the finance committee and the, the moderator ahead of time just to cover any last minute issues that pop up. And what time's that gonna be? Uh, what did we say last select board meeting? I think. Nine o'clock? Nine o'clock. Okay. So my question is that there's no meeting next week, correct? The 17th there is. Yeah. Are you killing me for God's sakes? Cut it out. <laughs> <laughs> You're putting one grave, one one foot in the grave here, for God's sakes. Okay, well, good for you, Joyce. That, yeah, that's our you know, uh, regular select board meeting, uh, Joyce, yeah. that, that week. Okay, so Jen, I'm gonna text you in the morning. Okay, you can text me when we hang up too. I'm fine. Okay, thank you. Uh, any last comments from the select board or anybody else before? Well, yeah, did you, uh, Andy Morris Friedman texted, he was wondering if there was a rain date, and I saw Christian replied to everybody, the, we can't have a rain date until we decide if the meeting's happening on Saturday or not at that point in time. If it's raining or whatever, then we would have to uh, reschedule at that time or, or open a meeting and, and continue it to a, a date certain. Okay. And we need to get it done before June 30th. Yes, sir. Great. Okay. Can I get a motion? Motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Good night. Good night, all. Good night. Thank you.